So when we get to the cryptocurrency, what I'm going to say is, is that because we didn't found economic theory on the proper marginal revolution, because we missed the major opportunity, which is, is that the differential calculus of markets is gauge theory. It's not ordinary uh, differential calculus. Uh, we found that out in, in, in finance that it was stochastic differential calculus. We have the wrong version of the differential calculus underneath all of modern economic theory. And part of what I've been pushing for in cryptocurrencies is the idea that we should be understanding that gold is a gauge theory, just as modern economic theory is supposed to be a gauge theory. And that we should be looking to liberate cryptocurrencies and more importantly, distributed computing from the problem of this unwanted global aspect, which is the blockchain. The thing that is most celebrated in some sense about Bitcoin is in fact the reason that I'm least enthusiastic about it. I'm hugely enthusiastic about what Satoshi did, but it's an intermediate step towards trying to figure out what should digital gold actually be. If physical gold is a collection of uh, up quarks and down quarks in the form of protons and neutrons, held together the quarks by gluons with electrons orbiting it held together by photons with the occasional weak interaction beta decay. All of those are gauge theories. So gold is actually coming from gauge theory and markets are coming from gauge theory. And the opportunity to do locally enforced conservation laws, which effectively is what a Bitcoin transaction is, should theoretically be founded on a different principle that is not the blockchain. It should be a gauge theoretic concept in which effectively the tokens are excitations on a network of computer nodes. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, let's imagine that this is some token. Mm -hmm. By moving it from my custodianship to your custodianship, effectively I pushed that glass as a gauge theory mm -hmm. towards your region of the table. We should be recognizing that gauge theory is the correct differential calculus for the 21st century. In fact, it should have been there in the 20th century. You're saying it captures these individual um, individual dynamics uh, why much richer. My, why should my giving you a token have to be, why should we alert the global community in this token that that occurred? You can talk about side chains, you can talk about any means of doing this, but effectively we have a problem, which is if I think about this differently, yeah. I have a glass that is extant, you have a glass that is abstant, we're supposed to call the constructor method on your glass at the same moment we call the destructor method on my glass in order to have a conservation principle. It would be far more efficient to do this with the one system that is known never to throw an exception, which is nature. And nature has chosen gauge theory and geometry for her underlying language. We now know due to work of Pia Milani at Harvard uh, in economics in the mid 1990s, um, which I was her co-author on, but I, I wish to promote her as 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 well as as this being my idea. Um, we know that modern economic theory is a naturally occurring gauge theory, and the failure of that community to acknowledge that that work occurred and that it was put down for reasons that make no analytic sense uh, is important, in particular, due to the relatively new innovation of distributed computing and Satoshi's brainchild. So you're, you're thinking we need to have the mathematics that captures, that enforces cryptocurrency as a distributed system as opposed to a centralized one where the blockchain says that crypto should be uh, it, centralized. The abundance economy, much discussed in Silicon Valley or what's left of it, is actually a huge threat to the planet because what it really is, is that it is what Mark Andreessen has called software eating the world. And what that means is, is that you're gonna push things from being private goods and services into public goods and services. And public goods and services cannot have pri price and value tied together. Ergo, people will produce things of incredible value to, to the world that they cannot command a price and they will not be able to capture the value that they have created or a significant enough fraction of it. The abundance economy is a disaster. It will lead to a reduction in human freedom. The great innovation of Satoshi is locally enforced or semi-locally enforced conservation laws where the idea is just as gold is hard, you know, why is gold hard to create or destroy? It's because it's created not only in stars, but in violent events involving stars like supernova collisions. Mm -hmm. We 
when gold is created and we transact, we're using conservation laws. The physics determines the custodianship, whatever it is that I don't have, you now have, and conversely. In such a situation, we should be looking for the abstraction that most closely matches the physical world because the physical world is known not to throw an exception. The blockchain is a vulnerability. The idea that the 51% problem isn't solved, that you could have crazy uh, race conditions, all of these things, we know that they're solved inside of gauge theory somehow. So the important thing is to recognize that one of the greatest intellectual feats ever in the history of economic theory took place already and was essentially instantly buried. And I will stand by those comments. Satoshi, wherever you are, I probably know you. Are you Satoshi? No. No, no, no. I don't have that kind of ability. I really don't. I do other things. <laughs>